Myrtle. A reading from Animal Money, a novel by Michael Sisko. The neighborhood called Myrtle is a place of incessant economic activity, all of it nearly too small and too quick to see. None of the shops are open, the shelves are bare, the floor unswept, the windows opaque with dirt and soap. The place is a battered, beat-up chunk of town where you have to pay for every lick of recycled paint, every fragment of glass you fit together, rubbing down the edges, taping them into a sheet you can stick into a frame. You can buy fish from this Mexican guy sitting on a rock by the fire hydrant. He has a crate full of gelatinous gray fish from somewhere, and for pocket change he'll snatch one out, put it on top of the crate, and slice you off some crescent-shaped pieces with his pocket knife. As I watch the footage, or digitage, here's a black guy in a white t-shirt and baseball cap in his thirties, gold chain around his neck, and another guy I can't see comes up to him and sticks him up with a knife. The first guy passively hands him a leather wallet that looks worn smooth and flattened out, like half-sucked ice cream. Then he just embraces the other man, who returns his quick embrace while unlacing the gold chain from his neck all in one gesture. Then the thief is gone. The victim just stands there, his face impassive, nothing on his face. Here are some children, haggling. How much for this dollar? One cent. No, this dollar's special. You gotta pay more for this dollar. One dollar, one cent. One dollar, two cent. One of the bargainers is explaining. You gotta be good with your money. Invest it. Check prices, or you lose all the time. You gotta keep ahead of everybody. And here's his voice takes on an especially knowing tone. He must have picked up, along with the idea itself, from a parent or some other adult. But then they'll just hand you over to the Latins. You can see the adult he's going to turn into. Big, cautious, cagey, with a long coffin chin and legal tender, vice-gripped in thick fingers, keeping his savings in the fat of his body and the gold around his neck. If you got fat, you last longer when there's no food. If you got cold, you can trade when the bank breaks and the credit card machines are offline. The skinny girl is bidding up her dollar. This is a special dollar, she says, smiling. They all giggle, because it's still mostly a game. I don't like to think what they may be giggling about as grown-ups. What kind of kids know this much about haggling? Shouldn't they know more about kickball or some other ancient children's right? The girl is actually pretty funny. Her jokes are making me smile, and I'd never smile. Maybe it's just affection from a passing ghost dad, maybe being obsessed with money makes you funny. Something about the substitutions, the symbolism, the absurdity of price tags on everything. They have to pay to piss proto-scam in the works. They have a pay to piss proto-scam in the works where they stake out a likely piece of wall near a bar or something and they charge you a penny a second to piss against it. You can piss on the ground for free, but if you want to hit the wall, if you want the sound blur that pissing against an upright surface gives you, you pay by the second and they watch you do it, too, counting off the seconds at the top of their piping voices, which might seem to defeat the purpose, but the urinators they target are fucked up enough to regard the shrieked out numbers as cover noise. The enterprising coffin-jawed kid says, get them to pay first. Then they have to guess how long it's going to take. And if they don't take that long, you say, no refund. 